Man, this is like, this is like so surreal. Like, it's like, it's like a, a flip on like the microphone or something. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, but it's cool though. How, how is everybody doing today? Like, if y'all doing good, can I clap? How about you? You doing good? For <laughs> sure. Yo, yo, yo. It's all good. Well, my name is David Taylor, and I'm a former Mock Middle graduate. I graduated in 2011, and um, I'm back here today to pretty much just give y'all my insight on um, just not being afraid of being yourself and not um, not always feeling like you have to explain yourself to people, but just living out exactly what you want to do. This is real. This microphone is like super real. Yo, yo, yo. Cool? Good sure. <laughs> job. All right. So, like, growing up, man, like, I've always been, like, sort of insecure. But I always knew that I had a passion for writing and music and stuff. Cause very early on, like my teachers would tell me that, um, like I was talented. I guess like I used to draw comic strips in class, um, and win like uh, awards for writing and stuff like that. But like in the third grade, I was I remember watching like this little dialogue video. And like that that video actually inspired me to rap, you know what I'm saying? So if I was to give a real answer of what inspired me to do music, essentially it would have to be a little dialogue video of how it doesn't like how embarrassing that is, but you know that's just real. But anyway <laughs> I don't know, I just like that song. But um <laughs> so like Throughout elementary, like, right, because I was just staying in Atlanta with, my, with both of my parents, and after they split up, we moved up here, um, and I started uh, from third grade to now. That's that's when I started staying in Flint, and we, we lived in my grandma, and uh, I went to the school called Daily Elementary. I don't know if anyone familiar with Daily Elementary. Oh snap! That's gangster. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't know what that is. Okay. Everybody's accepting each other and like my teachers are embracing what I'm doing and like I have both parents at home and like life is good but, like I'm really down. after moving to Flint it's just like a whole new world. It's like going from one extreme to the next, you know. Um, staying with my grandma with like nine other people and um, not having my dad around really anymore and my brother isn't around really anymore, so I don't really have like a male figure to lead up to, to really teach me how to um, to grow into being a man, you know? So, um, like the school experience was real like weird. I mean, I used to get bullied sometimes, you know? Like, and I used to deal with it in a way where like a lot of other kids do, you know? They go home and they seclude themselves from the world and uh, just, they're pretty much just frustrated about just being judged for whatever reason. I don't know why exactly I was being judged. Maybe it's because like my nose is big or like I'm, I'm like short or I'm not attractive to like, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> but, oh my God. But, um, <laughs> and anyways, like, <laughs> so, so I'm going, I'm going through, I'm going through school like real insecure still, right? And I'm getting like, I'm, I'm not really getting good grades. I'm not really getting the grades that I used to. Um, 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 like my best friend is like the most popular 
uh, guy in school, and I'm like the least popular guy in school, but like we best friends, and like when I try to tell people like that's my best friend, they don't believe me, so like it was whatever, but um, he tried, he, he played basketball, and he was like the, the, the dopest in the league, and I was like the absolute worst in the league, you know what I'm mean? saying, but none of that mattered, you know what I'm saying, like he still like, that was still like my best friend, you know, and that, that's just an example of what I want to transition into later, you know. Um, and after elementary, I started going to Beecher Middle School or Dolby. I don't know if y'all are familiar with that, but I started going there and I'm starting to make uh, new friends and I'm starting to rap more. And in my ninth grade year, I formed like a rap group with like my friends. And they pretty much was like, Influenced by like uh, like gangster rap music, and I am too, you know. But that's what they like to rap about. So imagine a person like me being in the rap room with like four other people that like like to talk about guns and shooting people and all of this craziness. So I, I'm trying to like balance that with like the stuff that I really want to talk about. You know what I mean? But. After my ninth grade year, my mom decided to pull me out of Beecher because like my grades were terrible. Like my report card was literally all E's, you know what I'm saying? Like I had to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like I didn't I didn't I never like I literally didn't do no homework, you know? Like I every day I went to class and I just sat there and like the teacher would just, just pick on me and just the students would like, you know say I was stupid and all of that, but I just didn't care because like, I was like, whatever, it's my life, get y'all. So, <laughs> so after that, like, my mom said, okay, you're leaving Beecher, you're gonna go to Ma. And I was like, not, I was not happy. I was like, no, I don't wanna go to Ma. I wanna, because I was tired of like, switching, like I was tired of going from one environment to the next, because like, they say, there's no comfort in the growth zone, and there's no com there's no uh, growth in the comfort zone, you know. And I guess that's just something that uh, I had to realize later on down the line. But anyways, like when I started coming to my like my first day, I was like super scared, and like I was just I was I was just so worried about like how like the people here would perceive me. So before coming. Like, I remember buying like a pair of like Air Force Ones and they was like super big on my feet. And like, I'm not even really a fan of Air Force Ones. And <laughs> like, I bought a pair of that and like, uh, I was just making sure like, whatever I was wearing was like cool or whatever. But when I came, I was just super quiet and super reserved. And um, as the days went on, like at, by the end of the week, like everyone was embracing me like they, like from the teachers, like everybody, like and I, and I just started loving it. Like the school experience just became something more, um, something more, a place where I can really just be myself and not really have to worry about um, anything exterior coming in and messing with like the way I uh, project uh, what I want to do or like. Um, the way I want to like get out my voice because everyone in this school was just super supportive and still supportive, you know? Like I wouldn't imagine going to another school because like the whole, the everything that this school is just based around is growth and not judging and um, expression and all of that. Like the whole um, zero tolerance for fighting, I think that is like so dope because not only is it a zero tolerance for fighting, it's really, like, Ms. Carr, can you, t I mean, uh, <laughs> Ms. Ms. Green, can you tell me, like, how many fights it was this year? Did anyone know? Zero. Zero. Yeah. zero. So not only is it a zero tolerance for fighting, it was zero fights this year, you know what I mean? And that's just something that the school had to put in place, you know? <laughs> Coming, coming, coming from a school like Beecher or wherever, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't even really matter what specific school it is, but like especially in Flint, like we come from, like the majority of people here, we come from a demographic where we feel like it's impossible to achieve um, 
coexistence without fighting because like that's just what we grow up around you know everybody's fighting everybody think they have to solve their problems with fighting and um being destructive you know and this school really like altered my way of thinking um not just academically but um <coughs> just as a person the way i go about treating people from the day-to-day -day basis you know what i mean so like it's crazy, like just going from all E's, right, to now making A's and B's. Like I remember bringing home my first report card and like my mom was super proud of me, you know? And that was just real dope because like I never, I never like even imagined getting a report card with like, a, like A's and B's on it, you know what I'm saying? Like I thought that was just, yeah. just reserved for people not like me, you know? So this school, like, I, I, I just pretty much just want everybody in this, in this building to, to just take advantage of the opportunity that the school provides. You know, like the grades and all of that, like that's that's cool and like that that's good. Like y'all need that, I, I suppose, because like at the end of the day, this is still the school. And um, we live in a world where like it's, everything is like based on Everything's on paper, you know, so like that's that's good, right? But more than anything, I just want everyone to embrace one another. Like, um, don't seclude yourself from interacting with people that's not like you, essentially, because we're all the same, you know what I mean? Like none of us in this in this room is any different from anyone else, you know what I mean? Even though we may look different or we may sound different or we might have like different point of view or we grew up in a different place or whatever, like we all the same and we just all need to um, embrace that, you know what I'm saying? Um, what's your name, man? Austin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you do, man? I want to be a lawyer. That's dope. So how long have you wanted to be a lawyer? This year. This year, you just decided that this year. Yeah, so you're like totally set on that. Yeah. So what inspired you to just like become a lawyer? Uh, you didn't keep that other school when I was in the sports. Yeah, that's crazy, right? It is crazy. So Austin wants to be a lawyer, and I just asked him what inspired him to want to become a lawyer. He said getting kicked out of school and having to go through the court system. Now, that's an ironic situation because he just he just provided um, factuals like regarding that we can take a negative and turn it into a positive. Like he doesn't seem like a bad kid. You know, you don't seem like a bad kid. But we go through things, you know, like we, we all experience the lows of life, but it's all about how you um, channel channel that to make it into a positive, you know what I mean? Like I would have never imagined, I would have never imagined he can be like going through the court system like that that's that's ridiculous. But yeah, I mean it's <laughs> but, but, but that's 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 just life. Like we we have we have no idea um what life has in store for us. The only thing that we can really control is ourselves and the way we deal with it. Um, life and what it brings to us. Like I grew up, I grew up poor. You know what I mean. Like I grew up not having a lot. Like I remember like Christmas is like where my mom couldn't buy us nothing. But at the end of the day, like me, like me and my sister, we still try to be as positive and as happy as we could as kids, not really even understanding that like material things don't make um, people happy. You know what I mean. Like we try. Like we, I remember when we first moved in. Our house, our house outside of our grandma's house, like we had to sleep on a um, on an air mattress, and like it was just one air mattress, like in the living room, with like nothing else in the house, just that and us three. And we had to sleep on it. All of us had to sleep on it every night, and in the morning, like it'll be flat, like every like every morning it had to be flat. And and when me and my sister got home from school, we had to like pump it up like this. We had to like take turns doing that, you know, and, and, and do it all over again, like every day. And, but I, I just remember looking back at that and that was like some of the, like the happiest times that me and my mom and my sister had because like through all of that, we were still together, you know what I mean? Like material things and the things that people like put value on and all of that, like none of that matters 
none of that makes us who we are. Like, because, and I feel like I can really speak on that from a valid point of view because I was able to experience the side of materialistic um, things. You know, I was able to experience the materialistic aspect of life. Um, okay, and I'm gonna get into that too. Does, any, does anyone have any questions so far? <laughs>